So language is already there as what is allowing the acting subject to be able to conceive what their action is going to be for others to recognize it, you know, robbing a gas station that happens in language just as much as it happens in, we might say, the real Verklik world where somebody points a gun at somebody else and says, give me your money, says, signifies. All of this is happening within not language itself as in the there's nothing out, you know, there's, there's nothing but language. There's a big difference. There's a little bit of a digression. When people were criticizing Derrida for saying there is no outside of the text, right? in Yao or text, right? People got really worked up about that. I remember somebody coming up to me in graduate school and saying, you think there's nothing but language. Everything is language. And I looked at him and I was like, who the hell thinks that? Nobody who's doing linguistically informed philosophy actually believes that it's all just language, like we're in one sort of, you know, idealistic simulation. No, the point is that you're never going to get away from language because language is already there doing stuff behind the scenes and you're using it even to frame the complaint that you're making. That's a little bit of a uh, more realistic way of talking about it. And Hegel's pointing at this right here, right? The self that exists, that comes into existence, does so through language. Language as the existence of spirit. So... So out of the acknowledgement, the recognition, again, very important term, right? We're, we're seeking recognition as self-consciousness from other self-consciousnesses. We got it before in this notion of, of duty shared across a community through the medium of language. So, anerkennen der Sprache, the recognition well, if we want to play around with this a little bit, yes, it could be spoken acknowledgement, the, the recognition or acknowledgement of language, meaning carried out by the medium of language. It could also mean the recognition granted by the language, granted by there being something bigger than all of us that we're caught up within, a language that is already, you could say, moralized. And this is, so I'm going to go on a little bit of a digression here. People often, uh, especially if they're coming at language from a, you might say, post-Humean uh, sort of point of view, with, you know, there's a radical disjunction between is and ought, you know, and you can never get an, an ought from an is. They don't realize that the, the you know, technically correct analytic position that they're taking doesn't map on to the reality of language as it's been used by human beings, basically, as far as we can tell from, from its you know, earliest historical attestations, the literature that we have, language is always carrying, but only imperfectly so, moral norms. Language provides a space in which morality can be imposed, developed further, applied, contested, uh, brought into contradiction with itself, imperfectly expressed. That is part of the nature of communication. So, you know, I think there's something a bit bigger going on here than just language being the, the medium, in this case, of recognition, right? So, and instead what we see as we're approaching the end of not just this particular section of spirit, but the entire spirit section we see a refusal, a rejection, indeed a rebellion against spirit by a certain misunderstanding. I was going to say a certain understanding, but really a certain misunderstanding of what spirit is on the part of the 
judging consciousness. We, you know, if we wanted to be a little facetious here, we might not just call it the judging consciousness. In English, we might also call it the judgy consciousness. People are often quite worried, this is a bit of an aside, in, in ethics classes or intro to philosophy classes about being, you know, what they view as being judgmental and they don't want to engage in moral judgment because they're, be, they're afraid of being, I won't say the word judged here because then it gets a little bit convoluted, being ascribed the status of being judgmental or judgy. And one of the things that's very liberating in ethics classes is I tell my students, hey, I actually want you to be judgy. I want you to be judgmental. I want you to make judgments. You just have to have good bases for doing so. And you have to be willing to have your own judgments called into question, not to just throw them out there and use them to elevate yourself above others or to, you know, push others away or anything like that, but to genuinely engage others as human beings. And interestingly, we could say, coming back to this topic, that is what the acting consciousness, the confessing consciousness did in fact do with its confession.